Welcome to the silver mines of Lavrion. My name is Aspasia. Though I am not originally from Athens, I have climbed to the top of its social ladder using my wits and intellect. I've even earned the love of Pericles, one of the most powerful men in the city. The mind truly is a beautiful thing. The mines make me nervous. All those fumes can't be safe to inhale day in and day out. The Lavrion silver mines were discovered between Thoricos and Cape Sunion, near Athens. They were rich in the mineral Galena and provided Athens with much of the silver necessary to mint its currency. Because of this, the mines were invaluable to the city, and the resources they provided helped turn Athens into one of the most powerful states in Greece. We will meet again after you've seen what the mines have to offer. Farewell for now, Wanderer. Silver mines were extremely rare in ancient Greece, which only increased their importance. Athens started exploiting the Lavrian silver mines at the end of the 6th century BCE and used its metal to produce its currency. Production at the mines exploded around 485 BCE when an especially rich vein was discovered. The mine's abundant silver made Athens one of the wealthiest cities in Greece. They also provided the resources necessary to build a fleet large enough to defeat the Persians at the Battle of Salamis. In short, the Lavrian mines played an integral part in the emergence of Athens as a Greek superpower. Exploiting the mine's resources required a lot of labor. To meet this requirement and save on cost, Athens leased out mining concessions to its citizens, who had their slaves to do most of the work, alongside poor day laborers. In the 5th century BCE alone, there were anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000 people toiling in the mines of Lavrion. Together, the workers managed to produce an estimated 20 tons of silver per year. Mining in Lavrion was a two-step process. First, the ore was extracted, and then it was refined. It took about 16 kilograms of raw ore to produce a single pure silver drachma of about four grams. Recovered artifacts from the mines provide some insight into the specifics of the mining process. Galleries were dug to follow the veins of ore. They were small and did not offer much space for the workers. They were also hand cut, and it's believed that it took whole days to dig only a few centimeters. Once the galleries finally reached the veins, the ore was extracted and then crushed on mortar stone to prepare it for washing.
Mine workers used washeries to help clean rock from the ore. The washing process required a large supply of water, but Lavrion was an infamously dry region. To compensate, cisterns were built in the mining area to collect and conserve seasonal rainwater. Once enough water had accumulated, workers poured it into wooden troughs containing rock and ore. The water's flow separated the lighter grains of rock from the heavier ore, which was caught in depressions at the bottom of the trough. The newly cleaned ore was collected for refinement, and the water was redirected back into a tank to be reused later. Once the ore was clean and dry, it was ready for smelting. Its purpose was to isolate the silver in the ore. To do this, the ore was placed in a conical furnace filled with combustible charcoal. Bellows pumped air into the furnace to control the temperature. Inside, the ore burned, emitting a toxic smoke that was evacuated through a chimney. Eventually, the silver alloy was separated from the slag and collected for the last step in the refinement process, cupellation. Cupellation removed any leftover lead from the silver. The smelted alloy was placed in a cupel, an absorbent bowl made of bone ashes. It was then put in a furnace, where it absorbed the lead and left only silver behind. While the mines of Lavrion belonged to Athens, the city frequently leased them to private citizens who exploited the site for anywhere from three to ten years. These citizens enlisted slaves and poor day laborers to carry out most of the work. The workers had a very low life expectancy, about three to five years, due to the hazardous working conditions. The dangers they faced included toxic lead vapor in the air and lung-choking dust in the galleries. However, they were fed well enough to keep up their work, and their combined labor managed to produce an estimated 20 tons of silver a year. I hope you enjoyed your trip through the mines. We talk so much of Athens' glory, but we often forget the city's power was due to tremendous amounts of work. Work that often had a great human cost. What else would you like to do? Excellent, let's begin. What was the last step in the silver refinement process? 
Washing the ore was done shortly after its extraction, but it was still early on in the process. Try again. Extraction was actually one of the first steps in the mining process. Keep trying. Smelting isolated the silver in the ore, but it was not the final step in the refinement. Try another answer. Yes! Copulation removed any remaining lead, leaving only the silver behind. Now, for the second question. How did workers acquire water for the ore washing process? Lauvrion was a very dry area, and there were no rivers close enough to be redirected. Pick another answer. No, importing water from the sea would have been too much work, even for the industrious miners. Try again. If they did beg Poseidon, their pleas fell on deaf ears because no such well existed. Try a different answer. Correct. The workers used cisterns to collect the seasonal rainwater. Now, the final question. Which famous battle did the mines help Athens win? The Battle of Nemea ended in a stunning Spartan victory against the allied Greek cities of Thebes, Argos, Corinth, and unfortunately, Athens. Try a different answer. This battle was between Sparta, Thebes, and Argos. Athens did not participate. Keep trying. The Battle of Heronia was fought against Philip II's Macedonian forces, and Athens was on the losing side. Try another answer. Correct. The Athenians used silver from the mines to finance a massive fleet for the Battle of Salamis. It's clear your visit has taught you much. A job well done, Wanderer. Farewell, Wanderer. Best of luck on your journeys. <laughs>